In this video, we're going to take a look at some forgotten beauty products of the 1920s. 1920 was a time of great change in America. The country was coming out of World War I and women were starting to break out of their traditional roles. This led to an explosion in creativity including the beauty industry. Women were looking for new and innovative ways to enhance their natural beauty and companies responded with a flood of new products. But over time, these products have been forgotten. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of them and see how they can be used today. Thank you, Amiro, for sponsoring this video. And are you fed up of lengthy salon trips? Not a problem if you have a Miro skin tightening machine with immediate results. This radio frequency device is perfect for plumping skin and toning the jawline at home. It features a comprehensive four in one skincare solution, red LED light, red infrared warming, six pole radio frequency, microcurrent electrical muscle stimulation, and reduces wrinkles and fine lines effectively. To restore a young face, this cutting edge anti-aging skincare technology stimulates collagen formation, increases blood circulation, tightens and lifts the skin. And this is a four in one skincare product. The first one is the Six Pole RF. By efficiently promoting collagen formation, this technique reduces fine wrinkles and smile lines by 32.6% and nasolabial folds by 29.2%. And the next one is the Gentle Microcurrent Therapy, lifting and firming and gets rid of the morning bloating look. And the next is the red infrared light, which increases skin elasticity and revitalizing even the lowest layer of skin. And the fourth one is red LED light, enhancing skin microcirculation and skin brightness. Select from two modes, firming and lifting mode, and it's suggested to use the firming and lifting mode in the morning to help tighten the jawline. And it's suggested to use other mode, which is the RF and red light, infrared light, wrinkle smoothing and rejuvenation mode for 10 minutes at night before going to bed. This one lifts the face, minimizes wrinkles and increases collagen production. It has an elegant and simple design with an ergonomic head. The characteristic 60 degree triangle head covers every inch of the skin. As a smart indication, after the gadget vibrates, move on to smooth the next area of the skin which is really useful because sometimes I find it hard to keep track of how long to keep it on each part. It has a wireless design so ditch the clutter of wires and take advantage of a hassle-free therapy. And I just love the idea of being able to reduce wrinkles, have useful skin, and plump skin, and professional results at home. The Amiro Skin Tank Machine is pretty awesome. So treat yourself to smoother, tighter, lifted skin, all in the comfort of your own home with the Amiro Skin Tightening Machine. And don't forget to use my promo code and click the link in my bio and description box. Thank you, Amiro, for sponsoring this video, and let's jump back into the main video. At the dawn of the 1920s, America was brimming with optimism and newfound hope. After weathering poverty, a pandemic, and a brutal war, Americans had a real cause to celebrate. They had survived it all and were entering a new era of progress and prosperity. But as 1920s America shone in glory, trouble lurked beneath the surface. Prejudices still held firm against anyone who felt different or broke the social order of 1920s America. Though economic growth fueled optimism, millions of Americans were struggling for basic necessities all the same. The 1920s were a time of dazzling wonder and deep despair. Young people reveled in the age of flappers and jazz while workers pressed their faces against shop windows wishing for just a chance to change their lives for the better. In 1920s America, you could find yourself reveling in joy just blocks away from deep sorrow. This dichotomy colored American life more than anything else in that era. 
The 1920s were a decade marked by excess, innovation, and a newfound sense of freedom. Emerging from the horrors of World War I, Americans eagerly embraced all things modern, from jazz to technology to most notably pop culture. Movie stars and singers were idolized, their images flooding newspapers and magazines. The 1920s saw the rise of the flapper, women chopped off their hair, smoked cigarettes, and flouted societal norms. Along with gangsters, prohibitionists, and other colorful figures in American life. Art Deco designs were incorporated into clothing and film posters. Women's fashion changed drastically as hemlines rose and skirts became much shorter than ever before. Americans created an atmosphere of fun and celebration through costume parties, jazz clubs, and speakeasies during a time that would become known as the Jazz Age or Roaring Twenties. 1920s American pop culture set a groundbreaking template for the decades to follow. 1920s American women were brave pioneers daring to break away from the conventions of their predecessors. After the passage of the 19th Amendment, these women embraced their newfound freedom and sought to do things that had never been done before, from challenging traditional gender roles in their careers to becoming early adopters of new fashions. 1920s American women eagerly made strides in crafting lives based on their own desires and interests. They pushed the envelope of what was acceptable for women of their era by entering male-dominated fields and discarding the corsets and long lace skirts of previous generations in favor of shorter dresses and bobbed hairstyles. 1920s American women truly blazed a bold new path one that would constitute much more than just decade-long period, they redefined what it meant to be a woman in America. It's safe to say that without these courageous, trailblazing spirit of 1920s American women, countless doors would possibly be remained closed today. In the 1920s, a new world opened up for women when it came to makeup and beauty products. Women could express their style through everything from bold red lipsticks to heavy coal eyeliner and vibrant checkered powders. All these products gave 1920s women the freedom to express themselves more than ever before, allowing them to experiment with looks that were considered shocking at the time. The 1920s saw a boom in products like mascara, rouge, and foundation designed to create dramatic makeup looks that would just last until the wee hours of the night. In addition, 1920s women embraced new advances in cosmetics technology such as eyebrow pencils and lash curlers. Women could also enhance their features quickly and easily, transforming their look in a way never seen before. 1920s makeup and beauty products had truly revolutionized what was possible for women, giving them an avenue to stand out as individuals without sacrificing their femininity or elegance. By embracing makeup and beauty culture of the 1920s, today's modern women can honor those iconic figures who set these trends almost a century ago. For many years, makeup was considered inappropriate and was only used by a particular type of lady, as well as stage actors. Contrarily, skincare was a completely different story, and taking care of one's skin and hair was acceptable. In fact, failing to do so was regarded as reckless. Although many Victorian and Edwardian ladies wore cosmetics, it was applied very subtly in order to maintain social propriety. Makeup didn't make a strong comeback until the 1920s. Early in the decade, cosmetics were still on the conservative side, particularly when it came to applying lipstick, but by the middle of the 1920s, cosmetics was widely used and worn in the public. By the end of the decade, wearing makeup had become not only acceptable 
and trendy, but also standard. Women were greatly influenced by film and its starring ladies. Actresses and the characters they played on screen had significant impact on hair and cosmetic trends, as well as showing what modern women were capable of doing. Actresses were seen as glamorous celebrities, which led to a great deal of admiration and copying of the faces of ladies like Clara Bow, Gloria Swanson, Louise Brooks, and Greta Garbo. Film celebrities' private lives were followed by fan magazines like Photoplay and Motion Picture Magazine. They were also jam-packed with advertisements for numerous beauty goods. Cosmetic companies quickly recognized the allure of the stars of the silver screen. As a result, movie stars appeared in commercials to advertise these goods. Although the starring ladies in the movies may not have lived such an adventurous lifestyle, the typical lady might at least try to imitate the star's appearance. After World War I, the economies of many developed Western countries quickly recouped, and by the early 1920s they were in full bloom. The result of this wealth is a sharp rise in manufacturing. A resurgence in interest in makeup happened at the same time as production increased. As the decade went on, a ton of new cosmetic brands and products became accessible as a result. However, there were only a few basic tints available for makeup. Additionally, the department store contributed to a rise in makeup sales. Chain stores like Woolworths quickly spread throughout Britain and the US. They gave women the chance to examine and test out cosmetics in person. Women rushed to the businesses in droves to learn more, which caused a sharp rise in sales. Manufacturers were prompted to enhance packaging and quality as sales rose. A vanity case could hold a wide variety of beauty products, and the compact was an excellent portable makeup option. With each passing decade, quality increased. Film studio makeup artists, the main Hollywood makeup artists of the time, were Cecile Holland, Max Factor, and Westmore Clan. They had a key role in designing the looks of movie stars. Particularly, Max Factor transformed movie makeup. Since theatrical grease paints weren't very effective for cinema, he set out to develop things that were. He continuously created new items, which were ultimately made accessible to the general public. He is also widely considered as the inventor of the Clara bow like Cupid's bow lip shape. Max Factor started referring to his goods as makeup in the 1920s, using the term from the verb to make up one's face. Up to that point, respectable society had been using the general term cosmetics. Classic 1920s makeup looks. The traditional 1920s makeup style features a pink cheek and a smooth, natural complexion. Lipstick gave lips a delicate shape, and movie star eyebrows were in style. Sometimes the brows were drawn with curves that extended past the brow's natural line. During the day, women wore apparent makeup. However, evening activities were reserved for brighter hues and a stronger application. The typical lady would not have worn a dark, smoky eye throughout the day, despite the fact that it is frequently considered to be an essential 1920s makeup look. The film star flapper look also includes included a smoky eye and lots of cosmetics. It's important to keep in mind that dramatic characters and characteristics were created in films by exaggerating makeup. Now let's talk about 1920s makeup elements. First is the complexion. As in earlier decades, the complexion was regarded as the most crucial component of attractiveness. There was a plethora of skincare treatments available, including those that could get rid of freckles, whiten skin, develop tissue, maintain young skin and eliminate wrinkles. Throughout the decade, cold cream was a top seller because of its creamy texture, which helped to provide a smooth base for applying powder. Next, we have face powder as the base. After cold cream, face powder was the most significant cosmetic item for women in the 1920s. It only came in a few colors, and the names weren't all that creative. Regardless of the brand, the light pink hues were frequently referred to as flesh 
or natural. Similarly, brunette was a term used to describe a darker sandy orange color. To create a unique color, powders could be blended. Similar to this, ladies may apply several tones on the face in an effort to contour their skin. A small amount of powder could also hide a flaw. With a powder puff, face powder was lavishly applied. Instead of patting it on, it was preferable to rub it in to form a nice base on your skin. And next we have eyebrows. In the 1920s, eyebrows that were both long and thin were in style. It was customary to pluck and shape brows or to leave them mostly straight. One style had the brows ends drawn to slant downward past the natural brows end. Throughout part of her career, Clara Bow wore this style. She also had penciled brows that curled downward into her cheekbones and were drawn on lower than her natural brow line. This resulted in a sad, doe-eyed expression. The typical woman, however, might not have plucked her brows as thinly as those of the movie stars or models in advertisements. For instance, portrait images of regular women often depict brows that are slightly bigger and more realistic than those of the movie stars. Instead of penciling in their brows, women might condition and smooth them with a dab of Vaseline. And next we have eyelashes. In the 1920s, eyelash care products were marketed under names including Mass Cosmetic, eyelash beautifier and eyelash darkener. These items gave the lashes more gloss and deepened them. There were liquid, paste, and cake versions of eyelash mascara. A thin, flat application brush was included with the solid cake blocks. Before putting the resulting liquid to the lashes, women could spit onto the block and smear it about with a brush. The eyebrows could also be treated with these same products. The majority of available colors were black, dark brown and brown. In 1923, Curl Lash created their original eyelash curler. Despite the fact that it was costly at the time, it was a huge success. Since its creation, not much has changed. Modern clamp curlers still have a similar appearance. And next we have eyeliner. Instead of using a distinct type of pencil, eyeliner was applied with brow pencils. Basic color variations, mostly black and brown, were available. You might draw a line only on the top lashes or all the way around the eye. In either case, the eyeliner was simply drawn on to match the natural lash line and contour the eyes. In order to give the eyes a smoky appearance and to add sensuous drama, it might also be smudged out with a finger. However, lengthy flicks or cat eyes were not in style during the 1920s. And when it comes to eyeshadow, instead of using a distinct type of pencil, eyeliner was applied with brow pencils. Basic color variations of mostly black and brown were available. Film stars often wore smoky makeup to emphasize their eyes and to add a touch of drama. For formal events or evening functions, a typical woman would wear overt eyeshadow, but not during the day. Any daytime eyeshadow would be quite subdued. One option is to use a face powder that is darker in color. And the basic color options for eyeshadow in the 1920s included gray, black, plum and brown. And when it comes to lipstick, it was available in colors of coral orange, pink and red. Products utilize words like poppy, rose, crimson, cherry and raspberry and carmine to describe their colors, but many companies also simply refer to their lipstick as light, medium and dark. The Cupid's Bow lip shape is the most frequently associated with 1920s makeup. On the upper lip, a curved bow form was drawn, even extending beyond the natural lip line. Likewise, the center of the lower lip was covered in lipstick. The mouth became rounder and doll-like as a result. And rouge was available in three different formulations, liquid, dry powder, and cream. While powder rouge used mainly for touch-ups, liquid and cream rouge were applied before powdering. Pink hues were the most popular rouge, ranging from a light pastel pink to dark rose. Women with a golden skin tone or tan were thought to look good in coral oranges once tans were accepted later in the decade. The power of advertising 
advertising, illustrations predominated in the hair and beauty advertisements from the 1920s, and photography wasn't used that often, so it was mostly illustrations for advertisement in the 1920s. Even well-known faces were even drawn in the 20s. The use of makeup evolved in a similar manner throughout the decade. In other words, people were a little more careful about cosmetic use during the beginning of the decade. By the end of the decade, wearing makeup had become not only acceptable and trendy, but also standard. In the 1920s, cosmetics had a quick and significant expansion. This resulted in a significant rise in the brands and products that were offered to women, providing them additional options. And now let's talk about some popular 1920s beauty brands. The first one on the list is Palm Olive. Milwaukee, Wisconsin saw the establishment of the B.J. Johnson Soap Company in 1864. The brand Palm Olive Soap was first made in 1898 using a mixture of palm and olive oils, and a lot of people use the soap to wash their face. And next we have Yardley, the British personal care company Yardley of London, sometimes known as Yardley or Yardleys, is one of the oldest companies in the world to focus on cosmetic scents and associated toiletry items. By the turn of the 20th century, the company, which had been around since 1770, had grown to be a significant soap and fragrance manufacturer and was very popular in the 20s. The business relocated to Fashionable Bond Street in London by 1910, and in 1921, Yardley was awarded its first royal warrant. The business currently has two royal warrants. And next we have Kiss Proof Lips. On August 17, 1923, Delica Lab Inc. introduced Kiss Proof and registered its trademark for face powder, lipstick, and rouge. The great selling feature of Kiss Proof, well, the claim was that it was Kiss Proof, as well as the ease of application and lack of retouching. All positives at a period when cosmetics, particularly lipstick, were yet in their fancy. The major turning point for the company appears to have been the choice to use popular actress Anna Q. Nilsson as the model for the Kiss Proof Girl, which US artist Rolf Armstrong created in 1926. The corporation spent $250,000 on advertising in 1927 alone because of the powerful, alluring image and famous marketing campaign of this time, and that was a lot of money back then. Kiss Proof saw an increase in sales each year because of its use of Hollywood icons and its reasonable price point. Due to its enormous success, a late 1920s advertisement could boast that 5 million ladies utilize its products on a regular basis. Even though the lipstick was discovered to contain significant amounts of heavy metal in 1934 and it was named and it was shamed in MC Phillips Skin Deep, an expose of the dangers of the beauty industry and the ingredients used in products at the time, Kiss Proof was still sold in the US until the early 1940s. And I'm pretty sure like most beauty products in the 20s were probably very toxic. And next we have the Dawn of the Tan and Cody Tan products were very popular in the later half of the 1920s. Francis Cody created the American French Global Cosmetics Corporation, Cody Inc. in 1904, and Cody really started to take off in the 1920s and then became even more popular in the 30s, but I'll save that for a 1930s video. Next, we have Maybelline, and maybe it's Maybelline was a slogan even in the 1920s. Thomas Lyle Williams, a chemist, established the Maybelline Company in Chicago in 1915. Williams observed his older sister Mabel, giving her eyelashes a darker, fuller appearance by coating them with a Vaseline and coal dust mixture. He modified it using a chemistry set to create a regionally popular product named Lash Brow Line. Williams gave her the name Maybelline for his makeup product. The company created the first mass market automatic ultra lash in the 1960s and Maybelline Cake Mascara, the first modern eye cosmetic for everyday use in 19. And next we have Mary Garden Rouge, and the company is Regard. When Jean Baptiste Regard relocated from his native country Paris in 1852, the Regard saga officially began. As his interest in the world of scent grew, he started creating the distinctive perfumes that would later make the Regard brand famous. And next we have Bonchilla, the crown 
chemical company was founded in 1896 by John M. Price, who was born in 1872 in Washington County, Indiana. The company initially produced household goods like laundry and detergent. Price relocated his expanding business and family to Indianapolis in 1900. After giving up on the laundry detergent industry in 1905, Price transitioned to the industry that would become his legacy, cosmetics. In 1905, Price renamed Crown Chemical Company as Bonchilla Laboratories and concentrated on developing a line of cosmetics and skincare products. The Package O Beauty, one of the company's best-selling items, is featured in the advertisement shown here, which is most likely from 1920s. Many Hollywood actresses, such as Joan Crawford, who lent her name and likeness to Bontilla advertisements, were fans of the product line. And next we have Pond's Cold Cream, which was very popular in their 20s. Theron T. Pond, a pharmacist from Utica, New York, developed Pond's Cold Cream in the United States in 1846 and obtained a patent for it. Witch Hazel was used by Mr. Pond to make a medical tea that he helped to treat minor wounds and other skin conditions. He called it the Golden Treasure. It would be eventually be known as Pond's Extract. The TT Pond Company was established in 1849 by Pond and additional investors. Soon after, due to his deteriorating health, he sold his share in the business. 1852 saw his passing. Pond's Extract Company was the name given to the business when it was formed in 1914. Pond's eventually relocated to Connecticut and set up shop there. Later, it relocated to New York City for its sales office. Pond started running national advertisements in 1886 until 1910. They ran advertisements using the moniker Pond's Healing. By the 20th century, the company's primary focus was on the sale of cosmetics. Pond's goods entered the facial care market with the development of Pond's Vanishing Cream and Pond's Cold Cream. The beauty products of the 1920s have long been forgotten and overshadowed by more modern cosmetics. However, these era-defining products Products were still highly effective at addressing the needs for their time. From classic makeup looks to unique hair treatments, the forgotten beauty products of the 1920s embody an aesthetic and truly stands the test of time. The unique combination of vintage charm and timeless effectiveness make the forgotten beauty products of the 1920s an essential part of any period style collection. The next time you're feeling nostalgic for a past era, Era, the forgotten beauty products of the 1920s can help revive it in a way that feels both traditional and modern at the same time. Reclaim your heritage with the forgotten beauty products of the 1920s today. Alright, thanks for watching and don't forget to check out some of my other vintage beauty videos. Alright, see you guys soon. Bye!